Well, good afternoon or good evening, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Your favorite program is back on the air. And we mean favorite. Favorite is Absolutely right. favorite. The number one rated talk show in Norfolk on Norfolk Cable TV. That's right. It may That's be right. the nation. Or at Could least the nation be. tomorrow. We'll, we're working. We're yeah. working on it. Well. Folks, the Bill Crane Report is on the air uh, with my good friend Wayne Weiss and I. We're going <clears> to <throat> put our unique spin on some of the problems of That's the right. world today. So, Dwayne, yes, sir. As you are well aware, I dumped the globe again. Yes, I am aware. Of in a fit of peak. I just couldn't take it anymore. So it was on April 8th that I did it. And I have the April 8th edition. I saved it. Okay. So why did I decide to dump this? Well, here we go. Trump deflects blame for January 6th silence. DOJ plans to investigate Trump's removal of data. Trump criminal probe continuing. You'd think that's the only news story they had. You'd think so. And it goes like this. Day after day after day, and I decided I'm not having it in my house any longer. I know, because Mr. Henry called and said he wasn't <laughs> sure what he was going to do now that his circulation went down. That's right. So, you know, you can only take this so long. You know, only presenting one side of a story, and they figure if they keep on hammering, hammer, 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 yeah, that, that, that almost, you'll accept their version of what they're selling. Well, they don't have anything else to sell. Yeah. That's the problem. And the problem is uh, they don't see it, or some people don't see it. It's, given it's all how, what color glasses you got on. We're a democratic state, big democratic state. We got a legislature that's got six or seven or 12 Republicans in it. Everything else is Democrat. Yep. We got people in this state that never... They never look at the ballot. They just look at R or D, and they just mark every D down. And, and so the newspaper reflects the populace. Well, that, that and also reflects their own ideology well, of course. also. But if they didn't, the people would say, I'm buying that thing. Yeah. Now you, you're appealing to the masses, regardless of what the news really is. Yeah. It's still a business. It's still, they got so many subscribers, so many sales times the ad that they're putting in, that's what they get for revenue, and that's how they make and their money. And by the way, this subscription rate, oh, uh, my uh, God. you know, is still up there. I mean, uh, not not the amount of money, but the, the circulation, the reason, yes. it's holding up. Of course it is. So, obviously, the business model works. Yep. But I'm sick and they're, tired of... To them, just, they're appealing to the masses, and the masses just happens to be what they say. Exactly. Um, and I didn't even get to the editorial page. What irritates me with that globe is 92 or 94 dollars a month. Yeah, that's that's crazy. Way more than that's way more mm, than it should be. Boy, um, you, now, you look at the Herald. What's 27 bucks or something like that? They're a different is, paper, but it's it is uh, a hundred and eighty. Four dollars for six months. Yeah, all right. Yeah, tw so twenty-six weeks divided into that. Yeah, yeah, is roughly it's reasonable. Bucks. But I, I don't think ninety-four, ninety-six dollars a month is reasonable for the book. You the know ball. what? I get the Herald every day, and it takes me when I got the Globe. It would take me I don't know half an hour, forty-five minutes to mm -hmm. read the Globe. I can go through the Herald in ten minutes. Yeah, Herald, you can. It's but, like it's like the, the Sun Chronicle. You yeah, can, just not a great deal of sports coverage mm -hmm. in the Herald. Uh, they get some stuff in there, but um, but generally speaking, 
But it agree we there are two sides to the issues presented in the Herald. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. You so. almost have to read the Herald to offset the globe to Which see what I the other side of the story is. Doing. Yeah. And my wife said, <clears throat> "Do you know that you get the Globe and the Herald and the Wall Street Journal mm -hmm. and Barron's? You think you could kind of lighten up on a couple of those?" <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, just tell so. her that's what made me so smart. Yeah, and you know what? She doesn't read the papers, mm. so. It's you and I. Yep. Um, so, okay. Bad paper, good paper. Yeah, I read the that little too. the little handout paper, the freebie. So, the person of the year in Norfolk, Kevin Roach. I did see that. All the charity work that he does, and um, so this is a shout out to a shout out to Kevin. Good job, Kevin. You're a fine young man, and right, he does, a good auto mechanic too. He he is does a lot of charity and good work for he this does. town. He really does, and there's a lot of it, mm -hmm. like an iceberg that's below the surface. Yeah, you don't know because he about. doesn't ask for the attention. That's right. So I'm proud of Kevin, and now further on in here, there was a story. If I can get my fingers to work, that is. Um, notable people of Runtham. It's part of a series that um, they're doing. David Binney, uh, class of 1958. Well, I saw this and I said to myself, Dave Binney. He was in my class. Okay, I was going to ask if you knew him. Sat beside me in home room. Mm -hmm. Very quiet guy. Nice guy. Well, he went in the service. Uh, I, I'm just scratch. He went to West Point. Okay. <clears throat> then he went on active duty, uh, Vietnam, decorated, um, came out, and went in the FBI. And ended up as the number two guy in the uh, FBI. Now, you can never be number one because that's always a political. It's a political point. point yep. Yeah. And Dave was not political. Mm -hmm. But good guy. We, uh, my class was going to have their a reunion. And Dave died. Oh, boy. Of a heart attack the day... He was slated to travel up from his home in Virginia. So um, I point all this out because I have a very interesting story about Dave. I have a friend of mine who has since passed away too, who was a good friend to Dave Binney's. And the last time Dave was up, he spent some time with another guy by the name of Dave. Mm -hmm. And they get talking about different things. And, well, you know, the job with the FBI, you know, and all that, what do you do? And he said, well, there's a lot of administrative stuff. And Anyway, um, one thing led to another. And I guess Dave asked Dave about the Kennedy assassination. When are they going to release the information finally to the public? Didn't we go by the release date already on that? Oh, yeah. That's what I thought. Yeah, I got a, I got a little news clip about okay. it. And Dave said, you know, beats me. It's not, not my pay grade. Um, yeah. So, but he said, you know, he said, I got to tell you, this is Dave Binney talking. Mm -hmm. He said, I got to tell you. He said, I know I have watched the films of Kennedy being shot. Mm -hmm. And he said, 
I'm, he's not exaggerating, but well over a thousand times. There's no way Oswald did that alone. He said he absolutely convinced in his mind mm -hmm. there was a second shooter. Oh, I just finished uh, the newest, the, the killing books, killing the mob. Oh, I yeah. took it out of the library. Yeah, yeah. They bring that very much to the forefront. Yeah. Uh, and then, what's his name? The the author. I can't. Uh, Bill. Um, Bill Bill O'Reilly. Riley. Yeah. And he, all his killing books were good. I know. I, I think I got most of them. Yeah. The, if uh, you're missing any of them, you want to read them, and you can't find them at the library. Let me I know. I think I got most of them read. I, I got. Because this this killing the mob, I just happened to go through the library last week, and I saw it there. I said, "Oh, that's interesting." I just you. It's mm -hmm. one of those you if you start it, you can't stop. Yeah. The um, easy reads, too. yeah. But it's very logical. He makes very lot. It makes a lot of sense in there. But uh, they bring that same thing. There's just, there's no way that this could be, or his brother, either one of them. You know, I still, I cannot. I and I've talked to guys. That, oh yeah, well I'm a good shot and all that. I could do that. I can't believe he was looking out the window. Now, he had to have been, had one eye on the car, mm -hmm. and then got it at Kennedy's head, boom, boom, boom. You yeah. cannot do that in that time frame. I don't give a damn if you're the best marksman in the world. Yeah, I don't yeah. think it can be done. And what was um, uh, Oswald? He was a marksman. Yeah. The lowest grade lowest you grade can get. Lowest grade in the military. Not only that, but in the book, he bring, they really bring out, the shooting aside, it's the aftermath. How did, uh, what's his name, get in there? How did, how come this guy got killed? How come this got buried? How come this, it, things just fell into position. So many deaths mm -hmm. occurred. Afterwards. Afterwards, yeah. Yep. Every time there would possible some information come out, the person would be Bangle. eliminated. Yeah. Well, guess what? I got a newspaper article in here. We'll probably find it later on. Um, it's been delayed again. again. I'm sure, though, that the Biden administration has been really on top of everything so far. They've been just like a well-oiled machine. I'm sure he's going to put his foot down and say, release that information. No, I don't think I that's, don't think I, that's I, going I know to happen. I know you're being facetious, <laughs> but uh, that's not going to happen. No. Uh, I, first of all, I believe, and I think like O'Reilly, he implies it. While we got the government is the government, there is a substrat under the government, something that that does function as stuff. And a lot of what I believe, like he does, is it's probably mob connected or business, crooked business connected, or there's all kinds of tentacles and everything. Oil, Everything's all connected together. There's oil men, yeah, involved in this. I mean, there's um, the Cubans. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know this. Kennedy wasn't really that popular. I mean, there was a fringe, the, no, a whole bunch of fringe groups that wanted uh, him gone. Really hated yeah. him. Not the least of which was some of the religious fanatics. <laughs> a Catholic and the maybe White his House? wife. <laughs> yeah, left <laughs> with all his shenanigans. I mean, jeepers, creepers. Um. So, shall we goof around? Or would you care to get into <laughs> the number one subject that's on everybody's lips, Elon Musk? Yeah, we might as well jump into it. Well, uh, Elon Musk, for any of you folks that have missed it, is set in motion uh, an attempt to buy Twitter and take it private for yep. 
$43 billion. billion dollars. That's what it'd be. Yeah. He's got the financing lined up. And Twitter has said, we'll sell. Now, the board of directors have to act as fiduciaries. Yes. And if someone comes along at the 11th hour and yeah. says, we'll give you $46 billion, and here's how we'll structure it, they have to look at they, that. They have to consider it. Yeah. Because yeah. mm -hmm. you can't leave $3 billion uh, hanging in um, the breeze. Uh, you have the uh, shareholders you have to report mm -hmm. to. So you've got to act in their best interest. But right now, it looks like he may get it. And boy, oh boy, is the liberal press absolutely having kittens over this. Oh, I know. <laughs> Unbelievable. Um, <laughs> Joy Reid on NBC is one of their hopeless talking heads. So for all the things that she could criticize Elon Musk for, she criticized him for using the term Karen. Now, Karen is oh, Karen. a oh, yeah. white I, I elitist yep. term, term. Yeah. for a bitchy, know-it-all, yep. wo white woman. Yep. And she got all over Musk for using that term because that term is for blacks to use about whites. Okay. So much for eliminating racism in our country, huh? No, that doesn't happen. No. Not when they demonstrate hatred like that. Nope. Um, Elon Musk, about two weeks ago, was quoted on Elon Musk on President Biden. He is a damp sock puppet in human form. Okay. Well, I... I take umbrage with that statement. It's a gross insult to sock puppets. That's right. <laughs> they're all. They're only human, too. Um, uh, one of the talking heads on Fox said, um, Ashley Webster said, he likes to put a cat among the pigeons, Elon Musk. He's a disruptor. And he said that he's doing this for the free exchange, for exchange of free speech. When someone you don't like is allowed to say something you don't like. He's, that's his definition of free mm -hmm. speech. And he is bound and determined he's going to do that. It's interesting. I, 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 never, I could, don't know what his motivation, the end motivation is, if, if in fact he has an end motivation. I don't. I can't see a financial outcome on this. Now I may be all wrong, and I don't. I don't know a lot of stuff. They but claim this is not a well-run company. Okay. He thinks. And he is, like it or not, oh, he's a genius. Oh my God! I, did you watch his space launch? Oh yeah. Several weeks ago. Yeah. Fantastic. Oh yeah. Folks, if you see these things, go online for them because they got the. The TV doesn't stay with them long enough. Or right. We'll do it in detail, but online you got there's a, you'll see it if you just put in SpaceX or yep. Musk's name. Yeah. It'll it'll pop up, and this was out of space fiction. Yeah. It was so perfect. Yeah. Uh, everything, the facilities, the way everything is laid out, and I know he had three space tourists that they don't like that term and they paid $55 million a piece to go. You know, we know that. But the, the, that set aside, the, the fact that it, how it worked and worked so well and how you could see everything that's going on. Mm -hmm. They had cameras outside, outside the rockets as it's going on. You could see the, the blast and the earth moving and the, uh, everything, everything that happened. 
Then what was really, really impressive is that they reused that first booster. Yeah. Yeah. From 100 and I think it was 197 miles down, this thing separated all by itself, turned itself around, started going down through the atmosphere at a certain point. It fired ret retro rockets, found a ship out in the ocean. And landed on it. And then the ship has got a circle on it, on a platform. It missed that circle by 12 inches. It's unbelievable. I mean, it just no wobble, no nothing, just like it was on a string. It really is incredible what that man has accomplished. Yep. And it's so meticulously done. You can see it's not slop haphazard or nothing. It's, it's just by the book. Yeah. Um, so if, if I think if, he, if you can do something with Twitter, he'll do it. Yeah. I think he's got the ability to do it. Well, he will, I, uh, they, they're talking about the advertising. That's where the money is. You get 97% of your money. Yeah, of course. Uh, these things from advertising. And they'll say, they were saying, he'll straighten that out. By the way, that's another interesting thing. How much money does General Motors and Ford, Toyota, how much money do they spend on advertising on TV? Oh on my God, sporting that's... events and on stupid TV programs. Too. Uh, just a given day. Yeah. Just look at how yeah. many ads there you're going to see. Elon Musk has not spent one penny mm -hmm. on marketing or advertising for his Tesla cars. That's true. You do not see any Tesla ads. I never thought of that. Imagine how much money that is in his pocket. But yet it's a, it's a household name. It is. You, we know, you know more, or the average person out there knows more about, I think, about a Tesla than they do uh, a Lincoln. Yeah. Because he's made all these claims, and guess what? He's done them all. Yeah. I mean, he is a story. He was Time Magazine's Man of the Year mm -hmm. for a good reason. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, by the way, a couple of uh, twi twits, <laughs> tweets came out of Twitter today from employees. Mm -hmm. One of them These was... These are Twitter employees? Yeah. Okay. They're, they're, <clears throat> they are having kittens over the fact that Elon Musk is going to take over. We will be losing moderation. Oh, yeah. I, In other words, we will be losing the right to censure. And that's what's wrong. That's what got him so talked off, mm -hmm. is he gets censored. Uh, and he sees the, uh, anything from the right of center getting censured. Uh, only, only the far left. Mm -hmm. has carte blanche to say any damn thing they want. Right. Well, that again, I was just going to say that their definition of moderation is totally different than somebody else's definition of moderation. And you're right that Twitter is going to be, I think it's going to change. Um, I'm not a big user. I'm not a big follower. No, I haven't. I've never I done can't, It's just too much stuff, stuff to, to, to wade through. And I, I'm not good enough on, on, online. To, to start putting the filters and finding all this stuff. Oh, all that stuff. I mean, you know what? I've got an active enough life, thank God. Yeah. Uh, I, at my age, still to interface with people and have fun and all that. I don't need to go on a computer and go in a chat room with oh. 14 knuckleheads that I, who knows who the hell they yeah, are. Yeah, that's right. And, and talking about things that, and half of them aren't even telling the truth about what they are or who yeah. they are. Or, hey, who the hell's got time for that? Yeah, I, um, I, I don't. Uh, I don't either. I, and I don't see the things, uh, other things in, on the Facebook. They tell the damnedest things. Mm -hmm. People, and they send photographs. And you know all their personal life, you know. And then they say, well... I don't like somebody invading my privacy. Well, you're not invading your privacy. You put it out there for everybody to see. Exactly. I just, I'm not going to tell you the whole story, but I did know 
this young lady that I worked with, um, and she actually put details of her love life mm -hmm. on Twitter. On Twitter? On Twitter. On, on, on Facebook. Facebook, yeah. Facebook. In gruesome detail. Yep. And then realized she had made a grievous error when people started calling her and saying, have you lost your mind? Is that really you that did that? I, what possesses people to put things on Twitter that they wouldn't tell you face to face? Yeah. Now, ah, I, I don't, don't know. You know, it, 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 I would, I would, we wouldn't have done that when our kids were little, but because there wasn't anything like that. Right. But even if there was, we wouldn't have done that because they'll put little kids' pictures on the paper or on, on Facebook, advertising where they go, what they do, what playground they play in, and everything else. You don't know what kind of nuts are out there today. Well, you say, well, it's, it's for my friends and relatives. Well, and stick it in an envelope and mail it to them. Absolutely. But I couldn't put, agree with you more. Don't put it out there for every wacko job to, or, to look at. Or for every uh, deputy chief of the Boston Police Department yeah. that just pled guilty to uh, molesting how many yeah, kids? Yeah, right. Uh, now, I don't know for sure, but how did he survive in that job with all those um, accusations floating around and yet the politician sat on it and did nothing and said nothing and the blue wall of silence yep. Saved his butt for There's what? There's kind of an aurora years, around years around these some of these positions. Yeah, that you cannot penetrate, or very difficult. And then the police say, "Well, what? Blue wall of silence. I don't know what you're talking about." Yeah, yeah. Give me a break. Sometimes I'd like to think the police were my best friends. Uh, no, I've always respected them. My friends have been cops. Worked for the Walpole Police Department as a young man, driving their ambulance. Um, but they're, they're blind to their own faults. Yeah. They're very protective of their own. There are. That, they are. They have this paranoia. Yeah. Them versus us. Yeah. yeah. And it's not just, even town officials, not too long ago, one in our neighboring town got arrested for DUI. He got off. He, he picked some judge and decided let the judge decide. And they just kind of like mm, naughty, naughty, gave him a little thing. And, uh, you know damn well it was all cut and dried before, before it went. Um, you remember the judge that got the state police guy out of bed and made him go back and rewrite the, write the report a couple of years ago? Yeah, and um, the Attorney General of Massachusetts, Healy, yeah. uh, Mara Healy, was going to investigate oh, this and issue a get full to the bottom scathing of, report. Get to the bottom of this. Where is that report? <laughs> oh, well, she won't be able to do it now because she's running for governor, so she's all tied up doing that. That's why she never did the report, because right. she didn't want to shake any you trees. You better there believe it. That maybe get some support. It all comes down to... All Good old boys. And all the, of it yeah. does. And by the way, I'm as bad as anybody else. One of my kids messed up. Mm -hmm. And, uh, well, it cost me 1500 bucks. But the uh, judge threw it out. Okay. Re you... Refused to hear it. So... It's just like that. Yep. Um, <laughs> the
there's a couple of other things here about um, Musk. I'll just quote this one piece by Rich Lowry. A kind of libertarian who has a puckish sense of humor and willingness to defy authority rejects this thoughtless and often cowardly conformity. He's the richest man in the world who enjoys a public fight and genuinely disdains the senses and the scolds. All of this makes him a very dangerous man indeed and perhaps just the guy to make the statement against intimidation and in favor of free speech that this moment we desperately need. I mean, I was always brought up that, you know, you, you trust people, mm -hmm. the FBI. Look at how corrupt well, the I, FBI has been proven to had, be. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, it, it, this guy Musk, I take my cap off to him. Yeah. Man, and, and you know, the reason he doesn't have to have any advertising for Teslas is because he is so much in the public forefront about everything else. Yep, exactly. Yeah. Um, um, it's, it's interesting. Um, where did he make his money from originally? I'm I don't sure. remember where he came from. Or how he, uh, South Africa, I think he was Yeah, I, but I mean, I don't remember him coming up, you know, making all of a sudden. Uh, to me, it, it was like, boom, there he was. Yeah. I don't know. I really don't know. He's a well, brilliant guy. He sure is. Jeepers, creepers. He's almost as smart as you and I. We'll get into that in a little <laughs> bit. <laughs> um, the uh, th This is good. Here's a paragraph from the news pages of the New York Times. The 2016 U.S. presidential election and the Brexit vote that same year gave Silicon Valley executives, U.S. elected officials, and the public a peek into what can go wrong when social media companies opt not to wade too deeply into what people say on their sites. Russian propagandists amplified the views of a deeply divided Americans and Britons, further polarizing the electorate. With better content moderation, apparently would all be enjoying President Hillary Clinton's second term. Yeah. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And uh, Senator Ed Markey reacting uh, tweeted, he tweeted that Congress must pass laws to protect privacy and promote algorithmic justice. That, that's, that is typical Markey. Yep. For the record, Mr. Musk says his plan for Twitter includes making the algorithms open source to increase trust. He's risking billions of his own money, so he hardly wants users and advertisers to flee. There's no digital Berlin Wall keeping people trapped in the Twitterverse. Yeah. So. These people are now saying that really Twitter, by censoring this right, mm -hmm. the conservatives, they've done the country a great deal. But they fell down in 2016 and they got all swept up in a whole bunch of other stuff 
and weren't able to protect Hillary Clinton. Well, I mean, give me a break. Mm -hmm. uh, oh. that, that's just double spin. That's just not spin. It that's, is. That's, but Mr. Markey, I'm sorry, Senator Markey, I see him as Elizabeth Warren's puppy. You see Elizabeth Warren walking down the street, 20 feet behind him is going to come Senator Markey. She says jump, he jumps. She says sit, he sits. She says stay, he stays. Yeah. He has very few original ideas. I looked up empty suit in the dictionary and his picture was there. Yeah, oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, he is the absolute consummate definition of an empty suit. Until Elizabeth Warren came onto the scene, you didn't even know who he was. He floated on the breeze. Yeah, I just take yeah. my get my paycheck. Yeah, know, I'm just gonna and vote, vote D for everything. Yeah, whatever you do. No yeah. original thoughts. No. Nothing. no. But now she, she's got him along as, a, as oh, yeah. her. Got him on the leash. On the leash, yeah. Come with me, Rova. Oh. But, um, I, it's interesting, Bradley Smith, chairman of the Institute for Free Speech, wrote an article in the Wall Street Journal, the 10 things that Elon Musk what must do at Twitter. Um, I'll, you know, it's a bunch of baloney. Yeah. But um, two of them I checked off. Don't respond to overt requests from government officials to take down content. When government officials covertly request content removal, expose them and ignore the request. When government officials tell you to watch out for particular misinformation, be skeptical of both their intentions and their accuracy. And number 10, Stop supporting congressional legislation that would reduce speech, such as the misnamed Honest Ads Act. Make the company an advocate for, free, for free speech, not censorship. Yeah. I think those two are wise mantras for him to embrace. The biggest, what it comes down to in a, in a platform like Twitter as as a owner, a controller, whatever you want to call it, is be able to di to di differentiate between misinformation and disinformation. Today we can't do, we got so much problem with that. And You're absolutely right, and you know what? Because we're only getting one side of it. That's right, and the rest of it is enveloped in fog. Mm -hmm. um, to borrow a phrase, and this is from another article, Mr. Musk cannot fix the culture alone. Two things would help, though. If people in public life started to value their personal honor again, and if the news media rediscovered its interest in truth. Yeah. Boy, that's like wishing for the moon. Oh, absolutely. That's but, right, because the news interest, the news became business, and business was to make the profit on the bottom line. Yeah. So the, the, the news suffered in place of profit or profitability. And so you don't get the news. You can't even call it news anymore. It's, it's information. Yeah. In the old days, too. Remember some of the old black and white movies? Extra, extra, oh, yeah. read all about it. Yep. They went after the story. Yep. And who was the first one to get it in print? Who had the details? Yep. And now it's, well, <laughs> I read you the Globe headlines there. That, mm -hmm. That's what it's all about. It's attacking individuals, attacking uh, industries like the power plan if it's yeah. not attacking it's protecting yeah and and the pipelines and all of that you know mm -hmm. uh, do, you, 
You recall, well, I'm sure you recall because it's, it's recent. The incident at, I think it was downtown crossing where they, these young girls oh, and yeah. beat up this other older yeah. person. The Globe had it inside the page, had a little thing about this big. The Herald had it on there. I know it. On the front page. Yes, they did. And when you read that in the, in the Globe, I don't get the Herald, I was disgusted with it. They didn't tell you anything about it. Well, it's kind of poo-pooed it. And I have, I have the article in here. Okay. Uh, someplace. Um, but it, it's, uh, there was four, well, wait a minute now. That's a separate article. I'm, I've got another article about four kids in a car. And they stopped the car on a whim to beat the hell out of an old guy. Yeah, that, that was another. That was a different. Uh, Put him incident. in the hospital. Yeah. <clears throat> well, the cops arrived on the scene. Now, two the two boys jumped out of the car and ran. The cops ran them down. The two girls sat in the car. Sixteen and fifteen years old. That's right. Uh, to say they're precocious children growing up would be a little bit off base. Yeah. But 15 and 16 year old kids, whatever happened to that stupid old idea that you respect your elders? And instead, they just picked a guy mm -hmm. oh, yeah. out of the clear blue sky and said, let's go beat the crap out of him. Uh, last year they did that. Well, they, they, they're on their motorbikes and they're, yes. and they're uh, surrounded the guy. ATVs or what, yeah. what are they called? All three vehicles. Yeah. And it, they surrounded him yeah. for some reason, beat the hell out of him, yeah. pulled him out of his car, smashed his windows. Yeah. I mean, good Lord, what? They're animals. It. Well, let's carry this step further, shall we? Yeah. Um, BLM yep. says we no longer can use the word looting. Yeah, that's right. Because that's racist. That's racist now. Okay, but back years ago, looters were shot. That's right. Okay? We didn't have people. Yep. The looting loot. stores when there was a tragedy or a hurricane or when uh, they were protesting yep. or whatever. Now, since uh, a lot of municipalities don't uh, and a lot of companies don't prosecute people, uh, somebody was telling me they were in CVS and they watched a woman piling things into her bag, mm -hmm. and they watched her walk out the door, and they ran to the front to the cashier and said, that woman's walking out with a whole package of stuff she didn't pay for. And she said, happens every day. We're told not to confront them. Not to confront them. Well, we did have, when I, I went out of college, I, I was on a management program, development program for retail, and uh, the outfit, the corporation I worked for, did have a policy in the field, in the store, that if it looks like it's going to be dangerous, don't risk your life to save fifty dollars worth of goods. Just that's common sense. Yeah, yeah. Don't don't be don't play a hero for that fifty mm -hmm. bucks. You know. But uh, the whole thing, if you don't start, as Rudy Giuliani would say, fixing the broken windows. It escalates. You got another yeah, problem oh yeah, that's yeah. bigger, and another bigger problem that's bigger than that. Before you know it, they walk. Oh yeah, well they do this too. Walk into car dealerships and want to drive a new car. Yeah, and just keep on driving. Keep on going. Them. Yeah, yeah. But and sending the salesman with them doesn't do a damn bit of good because they pull over to the side, whip a knife out, and say, "Get the hell out of the car." Speaking of the putting yourself in jeopardy for. Whoever closed at night, the, who was ever the manager yeah. at night, you had to make a night deposit. Oh, yeah. And then we closed like 10 times, 10.30 or 11 o'clock time. We got everything done. And we hired at night, we hired off-duty detail. Like they got details here, but in Ohio they weren't. They were county sheriffs. Here the sheriff 
is a process server. They're, they're a regular police department. And, uh, you know, the Yogi Bear hat, the whole thing. There was two guys that worked our store, and they were brothers, the Lesho brothers. And they were, we were always fooling around with them. You know, you, you get pretty bored in stores, oh, yeah. <laughs> particularly at night, and there's nothing going on. And we were making, making the pipe. They always went with you when you made the night deposit. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the older one, we were going along, and I said something about, boy, I said, it's creepy out here. It was like a rural bank, you know, and you had this night deposit thing. You had a key, and you opened up and dropped the bag in. And he says, don't worry. He says, I got old Betsy here. He says, they <laughs> ain't getting this money. I says, hey, look, if they come out, no firefight. You just hand it to them. I'm leaving. So I said, I'm not getting shot for this, whatever's in this bag. Oh, he couldn't see that. He was going to. That's right. I said. He's a real American. Yeah, you, you be an American <laughs> when I'm uh, down the road. <laughs> oh, the, the uh, when I used to drive the ambulance for the uh, Walpole police, if I worked the 4 to 12 shift, um, at oh, quarter of 11, mm -hmm. McDonald's would call. Uh, can I have an escort to yeah. deposit? The, Same kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. so the uh, cruiser would go down and uh, pick up the uh, person, mm -hmm. take them to the bank, drop it off, go back. Well, in those days, remember, they had hot trays for McDonald's stuff. Yeah. So at the end of the night, you know, there was a bunch of cheeseburgers, hamburgers, mm -hmm. Big Macs, all fries, all that stuff. So when he went back in the cruiser, it was always a bag of stuff that was going to get thrown out. Here you go. Yep. And the cops <laughs> always knew that when they heard the thing, hey, uh, Mickey D's, um, signal, signal McDonald's, you know, they knew that 15 to 20 minutes later, the other cop would bring the bag into the station, and they were all there grabbing and eating, me included. Yeah, well. <laughs> <laughs> um, so anyway, all right, well, I think, personally, I think if Elon Musk is able to pull this off, I think this would be a great move. I do, too. I'd, yeah. I'd, I'd be very curious to what's going to happen with this. Yeah. Uh, it, it really, uh, I think it's going to be sensational. I really and truly do. Um, but we got great news, though. The state is going to be saved. Ooh, ooh. Guess who's coming back? I can't guess. Remember Miss Diane Wilkinson? Yes! <laughs> With the magic bra. Yeah. Yeah. What did two and a half years for uh, for uh, uh, extortion and extra, all kinds of other uh, stuff? Yeah, bribery yeah. and extortion yeah. and well, apparently she's paid for her sins. Guess who's pulled papers to run again for the Senate? Yep, she's a good. Uh, this is her old seat, I think. That I she's said gonna try to go this morning. After. I saw that in the paper. I says she's got bigger ones than basketballs. To, to rip off the state that way and the, the constituents and then turn around, do your prison sentence, says, well, here I am. I'm going to do it again. Do you know what? She'll get elected. I, I, you, know, you know what? I don't know about that, but I, she, I don't blame her because you know what she's saying? I'm going to try it. What yeah. the heck have I got to lose? Yeah, probably will. Yeah. Look and at I, how many times they gave, gave that doofus there in Fall River a break. Oh, yeah. I mean, he got break after break after, after break. break. yeah. And he kept playing them for suckers. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Hey, um, has some good news for you. Yeah? Nancy Pelosi has announced she's going to run for re-election. She'll oh, be, 80, be 81. That's uh, my age, 81. Yep. God love her. I don't think that I have enough ability left at 81, assuming no. I had any ability at all. No, I, I don't I think it, I'm not. sharp enough uh, to function full blast at 81. The, the, you know, th that should be a job 
for a hard-working, dedicated person that can keep about 11 balls in mm -hmm. the air at exactly. once. Exactly. She can't do that. No. Uh, by the way, uh, in a poll, and I think it was Pew that did it, who's the most unpopular a politician in Washington? I don't know. Nancy Pelosi. Yeah, that, uh, yeah. Uh, they were talking. I have a hunch this is uh, well-known politicians. Yeah. This, this was probably not uh, a couple of guys that everybody hates, but that nobody knows who the hell he is or whatever. Mm -hmm. But um, now, I I've had this for I don't know how long, and we have never got to it. Well, let's fact, get to it. I then. got some stuff here that's been kicking around for a while that is great. Pentagon, excuse me, Pentagon forms group to examine UFO sightings. The Pentagon has failed to provide explanations for 143 sightings of strange phenomena by military pilots. Mm -hmm. So, Dwayne, what do you think about UFOs? Do you think it's at all, I mean, 143 of these things. Um, I know that there's more ambient level uh, lighting now. Mm -hmm. I know we get lasers and we get all kinds of stuff going on, and but still. 143 sightings by military pilots. Yeah, that's. There was a period of time that a pilot, much less a military pilot, if if something landed on the nose on his aircraft, he was not going to report it. Right. Because right away he'd get written up as a, a Section Eight. Yeah, and not only that, but uh, his career about eight reams of uh, paperwork. Yeah. Oh yeah, required. and his career is about shot. Yep. But now they they come the other way. The Navy started that. They got this thing of these things going so fast and, and the, the trajectories changing and everything else and they said, wait a minute. Either there's something really going on here or we got a real problem with maybe Chinese or Russia or somebody's got some technology that we don't know about or we can't do. We should look into this. Mm -hmm. And so I think now you're getting more, more accent on it. As far as possibilities, God only knows. We don't. We don't know. We don't. Stuff come out. You know, they find and invent something today that five years ago you'd have said that. Well, that's black magic. That's magic. That can't happen. You can't do that. Mm. They do it. Uh, but I, I'm not one for saying that. Well, you're an idiot if you believe it. But I'm not one to run out and get a tin hat either. Yeah, penny penny. The sky yeah. is falling. Uh, but. It's possible. There's are certain things that I, I don't understand is that if there are UFOs, they obviously want to be seen or they wouldn't turn their damn lights on. Five. Because if they see them at night and the lights are on, well, if you shut the light off, you'd never see them. Right. Yeah, so Just be a shadow. Yeah, they, they want to be, the be seen. Yeah. But, you know, you can go back and you can't put too much stock in that in history, there are indications that they saw stuff already in the 1880s, yes. 1850s, 1700s. Yes. Already there yeah. was, what the hell, the flying cigars they used to call them in yeah, the 1880s. Right. Before anything, before there was any flying, whatever. So there's, there's references in back, back going back. You know, I think the further back we go, we probably end up with them identifying shooting stars yeah. as as being some Could sort be. Oh, of yeah, uh, very yeah. much yeah. likely. But I remember when, when uh, uh, I got a serious senior moment here. The peanut farmer president. Jimmy Carter. Jimmy Carter. I'm not going to forget it. When he, he, was, he was a really a smart man. Yes, he, he was. He had a PhD in nuclear physics. And he was responsible for a lot of development of nuclear propulsions and stuff. And his, his thing was, he said, I, he had a curiosity about UFOs. And 
extraterrestrial and terrestrial life and intelligence. So he said, one time he said, you know, when I got elected president, one of the first things I wanted to find out, what do we know? They wouldn't tell me, he said. I was the president and they wouldn't tell me either what, they, what was going on. So he, th he kind of hit a... Isn't that beautiful? A stone wall on it. I assume it's true because... It, but the whole thing is that this, if you look at the other way, there's reason not to put it out on the public all of a sudden tomorrow that the headlines, you know, every TV station thing, UFOs land in Washington. I mean, you can imagine the panic that would cause. Stock market would be worth nothing. People would panic. They would be absolutely. Uh, it would it would shake even religions down to their down to the boots. Sure. I mean, because all of a sudden now, they could tell you what happened two thousand years ago. Mm. Because their technology would be uh, so advanced already that they, like today, 2,000 years from now, we will know what, what went on today. Yeah. There, there's archives and records and, and tapes and everything else. Where we go back 2,000 years now, there, there's old papayas. And uh, you know, with um, Jimmy Carter's conundrum, um, yep. I would I would guess that the scientists or whoever he was asking had no answers, or they had wildly conflicting That's answers. That's true. Too. Yep. And well, they, they did still do. not want to look a mm -hmm. stupid, or b totally confused, and. That probably said something like, you know, we get accumulated a lot of stuff, but it is really inconclusive and it's contradictory and blah, blah, blah. But you know, um, up in Maine. Did you get your two? Okay. Yeah, I'm going to end this very yeah, shortly. Right. Up in Maine, my brother in law's cottage up on Moxie Pond, the big the big woods, okay. northern Maine, wilderness. There's no ambient lighting at night. And to lay out in oh, front of his incredible? house in the lawn mm -hmm. we used and to do look that when we were kids. up at a gazillion stars. Mm -hmm. Just wall to wall stars. Yep. And you got to come away with oh my the, God, the yeah. understanding. We can't be alone. Be alone, that's right. That's right, yeah. Well, friends, this has probably been one of our more convoluted shows. Um, and uh, if you have a little break now in between shows, we're going to do a second show. Uh, and you usually hit the head and, you know, stuff like that. Probably want to take three or four aspirins or yeah. get the Jack Daniels bottle real close. That sounds like a good yeah, idea. Yeah, because it's not going to get any better. No. So take a break and we'll talk to you coming around in a little bit. Bye.